here at Lincoln University in New Zealand about to start on this exciting uh, Phosphorus 350 birthday tour of New Zealand and Australia. Um, I'm going to document it as I go. Come with me, let's learn about what Phosphorus is doing here in New Zealand uh, and in Australia and let's talk about these hot topics. Uh, I'll take you with me. Come on, let's go. All right then, here we go. Because there was a lot of theory conversions going on in the South Island of New Zealand, and so we wanted to make sure that our research and teaching was relevant. But we couldn't just set up. Welcome to the uh, Open University. Uh, we built this sort of for a bus load of visitors, a bus load of students at times, so the seats are the 45 to 50. Doug's just arrived, straight off the plane, straight to work. Uh, <laughs> just checking out of the, uh, the, the famous Grouse Motel. We're heading north this morning. Uh, on the plane to Wellington to meet the government. Busy day, busy day ahead. Let's get going. <laughs> Wellington. Ministry of Environment. So in the building there's a lift that will take you straight to the Novotel. The to ministries of uh, ministry of environment in new zealand and the scientific advisor to the government what a productive session we've had well that was a success job done brief the ministers now let's go and uh, go out and have a look around wellington Stopping for an early lunch on the way to Palmerston North. Very nice here. Palmerston North now, Massey University, the home of Headley Fractionation, of uh, where Keith Sires did some legendary phosphorus work, and uh, um, Mike Headley, and uh, the place where Andrew Sharpley started his career as well, amongst other many eminent people. Um, so, Massey University, Palmerston North, where the uh, land and catchment watershed meeting and uh, it's a beautiful day all the team are here early look 
And there's Rich. There's Pete talking to Lucy. Got to go and get a quick coffee before we start. See how long you can keep it in your mouth for. Okay. Are you kidding or? Well, just, yeah, just take a little. I've got some things. I have. Bit of a breakout from the conference. I don't think this is what you think it is. <laughs> it doesn't taste pepper and I'm getting a <sighs> bite at it. And, and you want so to yeah. take saltiness? Yeah. Four hour, no, it's a oh, yeah. 4K walk, but lots it's of uphill. From 800 to yeah, 1300 mate, meters. Mate. And we. Oh, uh, and return. It's meant to be a bit of an epic, a bit of fun, so let's see how we go. We're still Is that a Kleinman I see in the forest? Right. You're welcome to New Zealand. A Kleinman at uh, 1100 metres. Hey, there, there's a McDowell. I know the McDowell has us. And look, a Mount Doom in the furthest distance. Hey, Quoth, Gandalf, let's go forth. <laughs> The ring is pulling me! It's pulling! <laughs> wow! There they are, look on the bridge. Jeez. It's amazing. Wow! Hey John, it looks like one of our uh, teams leaving here. Sadly, we're going to have to say goodbye. Yeah. It's All time to things. say goodbye. All right, boys. Good morning. Good morning. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, goodbye. Great to see you, Auntie. Really great to see you. You're leaving early, Auntie. Yeah, I am. It's been a pleasure, mate. Yeah. Yep. Take care, all better. <laughs> so, P350 leaving Palmerston North here. There's the team over there. There he is, look. The King and the, uh, the Kleinman King getting ready to go. I don't know. Here we are, leaving New Zealand. Cheers. Oh, chin chin. <laughs> so, New Zealand over. All the way to Brisbane, Australia. So, here we are, Brisbane, Australia. We've arrived. <laughs> Welcome to Australia. Ah, thanks. It's great to be here. <laughs> Right, right. Okay, so here we are at Brisbane, Queensland, and we're off on a fantastic little tour that uh, David Hamilton's arranged for us with the team and with Peter. So, let's go do it. University of Queensland Gatton campus here. Look at this eucalypt. You can definitely know you're in Australia.
Tim. Hey, Phil. How you doing, bud? Hey, <laughs> Philip Moore. Hey, Philip. David. David. And Tim. John. Sorry? John. John. Tim. Doug. Hey, Doug. Keep climbing. We're, we're across both campuses. It's about an hour and 15 to drive from Brisbane. Come, making their way across the grass. Here is Vertisol. I've seen 25 here, Vertisol here in Queensland, Australia, and this is them. Um, these these clays that are washed off and weathered from the tops of this surrounding Great Divide Mountain. So, to my friend Davy Jones, Vertisol. We've got a hectare and in Chinchilla, which is like about a, like a four-hour drive west of Brisbane, or the phosphorus version. Obviously, it's better for us to look here. You can pretend it's phosphorus. Uh, and it was um, common would have about a dozen pesticide sprays. Whereas now, with trans, the modern transgenics, it's only bullshit because that that would have been quite labour intensive. But we we put some shades up. Um, stuff. But the the, um, the research plot, they're developing a really strong. Uh, herbicide and fungicide resistance. One of the best sites for backing those changes. We took peak biomass cuts, but we also had a two row cotton picker come in and do yield. Uh, we can't also do some mapping of the plant. Really nutrient rich. the bottom of the shoes <laughs> really sticky weathered from the tops of the adjacent mountains over millions of years so we're also messing up with Scott Chapman who's, who's very active in using grain for mapping and etc um, so now we're starting to form yeah so a lot of it's based on subsoil soil moisture yeah. that, that yeah. topsoil dry very down. very reactive soil so we don't yeah. <coughs> mind if we just had one photo together. We've got a proper Aussie watering hole now for lunch. Cool. The Laidley Flood Mitigation Programme CBD Levy Preparation Works here at Norman Bridge crossing the Laidley. You can see the, the sign there across the road. Just walking down here. Well let's have a look at the houses. Classic Queensland houses, these are called a Queenslander, they're on stilts, they're adapted, they're built on stilts, look, beautiful old houses, one here, look, again, it's built on stilts, basically, and this is how they adapted to the flooding. Uh, our colleague who was showing around, is around here today, who lives in this small town village, she said that a week ago, uh, it was all flooded, and it was all water just up to the edge of the pub there, there's the Queenland National Hotel, which is where we're having lunch at the moment. And that was flooded just a week ago. We had a hundred millimeters of rainfall in a day. Um, it really does put it down here. And critically, hydrology geeks and friends, here is the kind of intermittent levee stream area. Um, you can see they can measure the flood height here. At the moment it's just like a swale, basically an empty, an empty ditch. There we go, how interesting, hey? Fascinating. I'm on the bridge now, you can see over the other side there. And just a closer look up here. There we go. The Laidley Queensland Flood Mitigation Programme. How about that then? Well, she did all right. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, if you're trying to
in Queensland, Australia. Some fascinating stories about flooding here. I've got two experts that are going to tell us all about it. Hi, I'm Pete Follett from the Flood Community of Practice here in Brisbane. And I'm David Hamilton, Director of the Australian Rivers Institute at Griffith University here in Brisbane. Fantastic. Tell us the story, guys. What's it all about? What's going on? Well, 2011, 33 people actually lost their lives. Wow. Uh, and, and that was a, what they called a wall of wa water that came down from Toowoomba um, under massive amounts of flooding. And, in fact, 75% of the state was under a sort of flood watch. Yeah, it was extensive. Total wide, like it had been moisture build up since about October, November, December continuous and then we hit a period of really high intense heavy rain, saturated catchments. Wow. And another flood that followed 2013, that particular one they identified through rain radar there was about 700 millimetres in 48 hours. 700 millimetres in 48 hours? That's like most of the amount we get in Lancaster in one year. Yeah, well, around this region, um, the, for example, 24 hours ago, there was um, quite widespread 100 millimetres in, in 24 hours. So, well, two, I, yeah. I'd emptied 200 millimetres out of my rain gauge in Brisbane from a six hour wow. event. And so what do they do about it? I mean, what are they actually doing to, to try and help? I mean, can we have, are we going to see some stuff in the town or? Well, we've had a big project, we call it Building Catchment Resilience, and it's looking at Hillslope Reef Edge, uh, riparian restoration, gully restoration, and um, implementing wetlands, as well as um, through the township, you can actually see beyond the playing fields. When you go to Laidley Creek, there are actually pylons within the in the creek creek bed, and those are designed to slow the flow. So it's all about slowing the flow and creating areas yeah, yeah. in the floodplain that will uh, yeah. basically try to arrest yeah. some of that flow. Yeah. Yeah. So that whole concept of how can you detain slow, divert, all of these different opportunities and, and I suppose what you can see here are, are some of the past practices which are still very practical and that it's having your households up on stumps so yeah. it is a floodplain so if you're going to live here how can you live here safely and be prepared for mm. what are now really just very sudden flash floods so yeah. it doesn't once once we get soil moisture build up like we've had at recent times so it mm. doesn't take much of an event to, to get that runoff. And is it happening more or less or the same as it always has no, done? I think the flash flooding has definitely increased. Okay. Um, the, one of the things that really is of concern too is you know the wash off of some of the most productive agricultural soils in Queensland, in Australia in fact, the, the, a lot of uh, the horticulture produce come, goes into Brisbane um, and losing sort of 10 centimetres or so in each flood is just an absolute disaster to the extent that the estimate for the 2011 flood was 212,000 tonnes wow. of sediment going down, like being lost from the Lockyer and Laidley Creeks into the Mid-Brisbane River. And, and the thing is, for us, the, that the, the lower catchments are impacted and I suppose the other interesting thing is about how can the lower catchment people invest in the upper catchments. So there's, a, there's this challenge <laughs> yeah. of shared shared benefits, shared costs, and like the port of Brisbane, it, it has to dredge all that excess sediment, so it has a very practical view and they have relationships with projects, but I think it's getting that balance between catchment resilience as well as good land use planning and then ongoing practices that, that can sort of adapt and mitigate the yeah. impacts. Well, thank you guys. I think that's what a fantastic story, hopefully inspiring for some people back home, so thank you. So like a couple of years ago, got to a foot, sort of height all around the all around the town here, a foot of water. Well, look, we're getting close to a free package, so it's not as if it's not the concept isn't unused. Telltale signs here, look, of a couple of weeks ago, tide marks. Look how the houses are built off the ground, which is very smart, but also here. I think that must be a young lad playing this, that's nice. Must be a kind of a warning beacon for the floods. Again, houses off the ground. Pub off the ground, you've got to make sure that the pub doesn't go under in the floods. We're a few kilometres upstream at Mulgawi, McGrath Bridge. And uh, let's take a look at the bridge and the river here. 
see the sediment here on a bridge from the recent storm and the debris that's been left behind all along here sediment on the road look here and this is the stream itself that's it incised into the landscape because of all the erosive power of these 700 millimeter storms Phosphorus, and all that's nutrients, carbon going out into the sea. Uh, Vertisol here in Mulgowrie, Queensland, Australia. Beautiful fertile clay soils in the valley bottom here. Here's the, the Vertisol again and the Great Divide Mountains in the background which separates essentially the uh, east coast of Australia from the runoff that goes off down to the west. And here in the foreground are Vertisols. spillway the lake's called Josh lake uh, well reservoir dam uh, no lake lake Okay, but it's basically uh, human made. Oh, what a feeling! Oh, if you, the quicker you get in, Pete, the less painful it is on your feet. Oh, this is so being good. Being, being buoyant and standing on a rock down here. Oh, cool water, I like that. I mean, it's just perfect temperature. I know. Let's see what's going on over here then. Oh my word. I think we should. Ahead of schedule, like. yeah. That'll be the last. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big one, Phil. Oh, oh wow. that's mine. So we're going kangaroo spotting. There are some in here. We saw them before. There's one over there. There they are, look, in the bushes. How cute are they, look? They're all here, standing in the trees. Oh, we just saw a koala. 
but you've got to believe me. He's on the top of that tree up there, but he's too far away to film. But we did see a koala, koala to stop the car, and uh, koala, it was fantastic. So here we are, Adelaide, outside the Adelaide Hill, waiting for the, uh, the Uber to arrive and take us to the Wake Campus, where we've got a uh, symposium on phosphorus this morning. And then in the afternoon, we've got a tour, I think, of the labs and of some field experiments and so on. So we're just waiting for that to happen. And uh, we're all really uh, in the groove now of travelling, aren't we? B350 team on the road, there they are. They're all, we're all in the groove now, aren't we? <laughs> arriving at the uh, Wake campus. It's good to be back here. I came here probably about 20 years ago and it's great to be back. What a beautiful place. Eh? Um, while we're having a symposium, it's wonderful. The speakers, there's a graduate school basically taught me how to think about modeling. Um, and this is when he was developing a phosphorus routine for, for leaching. Um, and so, really honored uh, to be here and have it on in front of me. Pee Wee Cousin. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, I had, I, had, I had thought about this as I was um, mm. flying down, so I changed the title and flipped it completely. And. Um, and your management producing the Thanks, Lou. It's my first time to Australia. And it's a great country. We went to the lake on uh, Saturday, and uh, I saw something moving down there. I walked down there, and I got to get really close to six kangaroos, which was just really awesome. I've always wanted to see a kangaroo, you know. And as we were leaving the lake, there's a wall bear climbing up a tree, you know. And it's really nice. Next week, I'm going to the Great Barrier Reef. My, my PhD is actually in marine sciences, so that that's a dream of mine all my life to go to that. I'm really. Uh, Looking forward to that. This is also the US Department of Agriculture. Yes. So, um, thanks for the opportunity to visit with you. Um, it's been a real pleasure to, to be in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, about, I guess, 10 years ago, we started a long term agro ecosystem mm -hmm. research network across much of uh, the Ag Research Service. And we were charged with comparing. Uh, business as usual practices for whatever your region is versus aspirational practices. And that was kind of ill defined, but the idea was to think 30 years into the future and uh, what you would like agriculture to look like. All right. Well, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be with you all today. So, I'm going to be talking about a bunch of um, newer techniques that we're trying in piecemeal to put together. So higher resolution data, higher frequency data, long-term data with respect to catchment phosphorus management. Well, we just had an excellent workshop. Lots of discussion about um, better using global phosphorus, um, discussion about catchment management, um, uh, global databases and so on about the future of phosphorus so great to be part of this discussion by uh, hosted by our colleagues here in uh, the weight building in uh, University of Adelaide so let's now go on the on the field tour the course of so just on the left we there's a gold deposit and different silver deposits up in the hills and we'll be passing through an area uh, in the next probably 20 minutes time where they're uh, mining um, copper uh, and where they've actually mined sulphur. So I mean, this can lead to shift that plays quite an important role in the deep weathering of rock uh, to form quite deep soils and regolith uh, in the Mount Lofty Ranges. Look, look to your left here. This is the levee bank on this side. You see it there? Um, wow. So that drains most of the predominant side of this side of yeah. Australia. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It, and it, it looks so small when you consider the landmass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
and by the Murray River now, Swamport wetland. Um, yeah. um, but between us, we'll give you a bit of an introduction to the Murray River. Over to Luke. Uh, and the, the swampy nature of the soil. So really the, the key um, soil formation processes were you know, alluvial deposition of clays and you can see the bottom here, um, you know, very clay rich. Um, yeah, sort of bolus is very clay rich, um, you know, profile. So you know, fine clay particles being carried down the River Murray floods happening out onto swampy vegetated areas with lower velocity you're getting deposition so pretty you know typical alluvial type process coupled with you know lots of organic matter inputs and you can see sort of a, a bit of a gradient in the vegetation this is again pretty typical you've got your really riparian um, you know vegetation that survive a lot of inundation um, this the permanent inundation even this these sort of reeds grading up to talked about river red gums with those litter experiments I showed you with release of phosphorus and you can last year they had the biggest flood on the river Murray since 1956 things there are a changing hey here it is the river Murray big levee here on the bank Take most bigger trucks on these. Thought we were going to take you guys over. And this thing almost was floods flooded and then back into the channel. <laughs> We're down here in the uh, Murray River Basin now in the reclaimed land behind the levee and uh, there's a pump going in the background pumping water but critically this is a dairy farm uh, 240 cattle and uh, let's go and have a look I can't see any cattle at the moment but they're uh, Simply indoors somewhere. We're just going to go and have a chat under this tree. It's flood irrigation basically on the banks of the Murray. So over there is the levee, uh, which is basically about uh, my body height and a half above us. And every about every couple of weeks or so. They would run in flood irrigation here and flood, flood this uh, uh, this paddock here. It's got its own natural berm here at the side, this levee at the side, and it's flood irrigated. And look, it's pretty healthy stuff. So they use a bit of uh, urea fertilizer. Uh, there is no phosphorus fertilizer used on this farm of 240 cows. They're, they're doing very well with their production. We've been asking some questions. Um, there's a suspicion that there's quite a lot of phosphorus comes in from the flood irrigation uh, from the river and, uh, and then there's also a few oats being given some concentrate feed going in which will all bring some phosphorus in I guess too so that's the story here very interesting <laughs> Adelaide's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Luke and team. And uh, Melbourne, here we come. So you probably guess we're in Melbourne now. Uh, we met Brandon, uh, we've met Dave, and we're heading to the university to uh, meet colleagues at the university. Uh, so I think the soils group it was largely on ammonia. Arriving at the university.
university after a bit of an uber delay with traffic Warragul, Dandenong, heading to East Gippsland, ultimately I think, at the uh, lake's entrance today, but uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the second uh, Egg of Acorn post the uh, old po poached eggs. It'd be great. Yeah, we would. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the layer, the, yes, yeah. under the top layer, they have this fine sandy loam layer that's called a spew layer. The soaks all come out of, in the low spots and the soils there are heavy as hell. Um, you can have really heavy clays in those low yeah. spots, but you had, well describe your soils for us. So I think it was a, a grey clay loam over, over clay. Uh, well, it, they did a, a, a big study, an $18 million study, and it died to the ass. Okay. People had consultants, and for the consultants, they are dowry for life. Phosphorus in disguise. Go McAllister demonstration farm. You're the boss, you tell us what to do. These are RBCs, which means section. We had smaller versions of this at the end of six or eight paddocks. We measured every section, and we'll go down further and see the actual reuse where we measured the reuse dam and the, and the water going through the reuse dam. Pretty on it, you know. You're not. You're going to be. Yeah, you're going to kill it. Or so, you know. I can't say it's just for the mineral, but you would expect that to be. Uh, the case, especially here, these areas that when they cut and fill for the laser grazing, I I feel when I w look at a lot of runoff studies, that sometimes people don't have enough money to do it well, and it's very easy to get the wrong results cheaply. Um, and this costs eighty thousand dollars Australian back twenty years ago. Um, 
the way it works is that that provides a, an edge if we get a big flood. So we can get a, a rough calculation of what a big flood went through. The water goes over there, you've then got a V on the here. Uh, and the fancy lettuces, those are our main, main, main recipes that make it up. Um, about 1600 acres all together, just a little under the um, hectares of irrigated arable land, all under fixed sprinklers. like an inch of algae in the bottom every year man it's just you, you stick your hand under water and you can't see it the algal bloom is so strong it's ah rocket take this back to you for your american friends i'll love you forever uh, <laughs> that, that yeah. club root yeah yeah that see that it's like a nematode on the yeah. Oh. Don't take that home. <laughs> <laughs> ah. All right. Give me a hug. Oh. Blow my trumpet. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, man. Hey, you give us a right. give us a sound bite. You got twenty seconds. What have you got out of this trip, but Yeah, you... just an unbelievable tour of uh, New Zealand and Australia, where we uh, saw everything from you know diffuse uh, pollution from dairy and mitigation activities under New Zealand conditions. Um, to uh, dryland production and here intensive veg top crop production. Um, all different nutrient management strategies, all with kind of pros and cons. Um, and uh, I think all that need to be accounted for in terms of sustainable phosphorus. So I've arrived here in Lake's entrance. This is right at the end of Victoria, right on the edge of the ocean. Of the and the, the corner of Australia and it's um, the scene of the meeting that's been organized for the P350 team by David Nash and there's a, a, a group of people coming together of stakeholders from around the region uh, around the state tomorrow and the team are presenting tomorrow as well and uh, let's see how it goes let's go and have a look what a beautiful place a great place for a meeting look here right next to the ocean entrance here's rich getting ready the team all the stakeholders gathering Well, it's the final morning of P350 tour. Beautiful day. Then again, they've all been beautiful days. I'm heading down to the Gippsland uh, uh, meeting room, the, the Coast Guard training room on the seafront at the, at the margin of here at Lakes Entrance, the boundary between the lakes land and the water what a fitting place to finish the tour um got a bit of a job this today um, dave's asked me to chair the session and also i'm doing a talk as the team are doing a talk so a sense of sort of finale to the whole team uh, the whole work it's been a great trip great bunch of people such fun um so i'm going to go and grab a coffee um it's 20 past seven in the morning grab a coffee and head across to the venue and upload my talk. Let's see how it goes. Hi, Jen.
hope you will take it back. Maybe go back tonight, because you know at the end of these things there's supposed to be some call for action. Now, I don't think in this case it really wants people marching down the streets. What we really need is for people to reflect on what's happened and then incorporate it into how they go about their business. Time to say goodbye. See you, Dave. Bye bye from down there.